Cuban healthcare was very developed, highly developed uh, before 1959. But the most developed pieces of it tended to be restricted to Havana and other urban areas. The revolution, very early on, seeks to address this in a number of different ways. So first, they make the extension of healthcare into rural areas a really important piece of the Cuban healthcare system. First, it's just sending people out, building hospitals, that sort of thing. Uh, these, all these public health campaigns of the 1960s to educate people about why you should wear shoes to prevent getting certain kinds of diseases in the countryside and ultimately vaccination campaigns that are very successful. And one of the kind of most important claims that the revolutionary government will point to as evidence of its work in this area is Cuba's incredibly low infant mortality rate because there's a lot of work around that issue as well. And there is quite a bit of, I think, disillusionment with uh, conditions in healthcare, particularly after the fall of the Soviet Union, uh, what that's meant for conditions in hospitals, for access, and that there's a kind of differential system now that foreigners can get better treatment in private clinics where they pay than Cubans are able to get elsewhere. There are all kinds of debates about uh, the fact that Cubans are over-medicalized, for example. Now even the government is using this language too to explain why there are never any pharmaceuticals for people to get. So shortage, scarcity becomes part of the story here, just like it does in other areas that had previously been claimed as kind of victories of the revolutionary government. 